Hey guys, Chris here and welcome to my review of the B-Link BT7. So it's another mini PC that's running an Atom X7 Z8700. Now of the units I have reviewed that run this chipset, most of them, in fact all of them, have run into thermal throttling. B-Link hopefully solves this problem because they have put a small little fan on there and a larger copper heatsink which they claim will definitely reduce the temperatures and help it to run a little cooler. So the build of it is made out of an alloy here. You can see it's painted grey. It's a matte grey finish, which is quite nice. It looks quite good. No complaints really with the build quality of it. At the front here we have a status LED. Have some vents along the right hand side as well as a full SD card slot. Now just slot a card in here. You can see it sticks out quite a bit. It doesn't actually fully insert there. We have two USB 3 ports, the power on button. And right here is a large antenna. Now this is wireless AC that it supports, which is good to see because most of these mini PCs only normally have wireless N. So it's dual band AC. We have 12 volt input there, another USB 3 port and the full size HDMI out. The Ethernet port is a gigabit port and we do have a 3.5 mm audio jack that supports microphones. And here on the left hand side, there's another huge vent. So it is running an Atom X7 Z8700 as mentioned that can turbo up to 2.4 gigahertz. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM that's dual channel and that runs at 1600 megahertz. And there is also a 64 gigabyte eMMC that is running the operating system. There is a secondary drive on that as an SSD and that has an additional 64 up to 320 gigabytes of storage depending on the model. So I'm going to have a look now at just how well this performs, run through some benchmarks in Windows, tiny little bit of gaming, and most importantly, see if this is going to run into the ever so common thermal throttling on these Atom X7. So let's have a look. So the first thing you notice when you power it up is the fan. You can hear the fan noise straight away and it's a constant RPM. So it doesn't increase in noise, but it's definitely there. You just hear that steady hum of the little tiny fan and they're working away. If you're going to be putting the BT7 in a TV cabinet then you probably won't even hear it at all. I'm used to silent PCs and I prefer silent but if the fan is going to definitely help out then it's it's useful. So have a quick look now at the system and just show you that it is running Windows 64-bit operating systems. That's Windows 10 Home and we do have full use of the 4 gigabytes of RAM. They haven't allocated any more to the GPU. And the activation of Windows, although it's not saying not available for some reason, that is actually fully activated. And I didn't have any problems. It just connects up, activates automatically. So in the device manager, just go through the disk drives that it has. So the first drive is the Toshiba 064G17, and that is an eMMC. Now this runs Windows, so this is the C drive. And the performance isn't too bad. I'll show you in just a second. And the second drive is a 64 gigabyte SSD and power SSD I don't know this brand this is just the Chinese brand but it is an M.2 card 22 millimeters by 42 millimeters and the wireless and LAN card show that right here so it's Broadcom dual band wireless which is good to see because normally these devices only normally have wireless in in there so We've got the full 5 gigahertz band. Less interference, should work faster, and speeds of that are actually really good. The range and signal from this, and especially the antenna they've put on there, is excellent. And it's a real tech gigabyte, gigabit, sorry, LAN port that they have on there. So the speeds of the storage. Uh, you can see here that the C drive, it's okay for eMMC 4.5.1 spec. These speeds are really good. And here's the D drive. That's a secondary drive, doesn't have any data whatsoever on it. And you can install your apps and programs to it. And the speeds are there, they're okay. They're nothing wonderful, but I guess they're okay for an SSD. It's only 64 gigabytes, so normally you don't get very good write speeds. And the other models that have the 128 and the 32 gigabyte, sorry, 320 gigabyte SSD should be a lot faster with writes there. So USB 3 speeds, full USB 3 speeds, my SanDisk SD card didn't operate to its maximum speeds there so the SD card reader is only wired up via USB 2 so a little slow there but you can fix that using an adapter now on to benchmarks 
So I'll start off with the 3D Mark scores here. These scores aren't particularly good considering the chipset, I think. Maybe it was just running a little too hot and this is why these scores aren't wonderful. So there's Ice Storm Extreme 1.2, Ice Storm 1.2, Cloudgate 1.1. I have seen Adam X5s get this score, so I'm not really too sure what's up there. Now when it comes to the internet connectivity, so the wireless performance, wireless performance is actually really good. The range on this, excellent due to that big huge antenna it has. And these are some of the fastest speeds I have ever seen on the tests that I've done. So almost 60 megabits per second download and 30 upload. This is a 4G connection, which is actually really, really good, this one. So no complaints there. When it comes to the LAN performance and wireless performance, perfect. And here's the Geekbench 3 score. So you see the Atom X7 can near about 1,000 on the single core score, but the multi-core score really still quite low. Again, I have seen almost Atom X5s get this kind of score, so not really too sure what is up there. Could have been down to the temperatures. So thermals. This is where we run into a few problems again. Oh, for some reason that is not showing there. Okay, here we go. I don't know what was going on there, but here we go. So it got up to 83 degrees. Uh, thermal throttling does actually happen when you game. Now, at this point here, I've been running it for probably around three hours. And you can see the average temperatures. This is what I want to point out here. Look, 70 degrees. It just still seems to get too hot. It can't really expel the heat. So what that fan is doing is basically just circling around the heat there. So not really good to see there. Uh, although the, the fan does initially help out keeping the temperatures lower, the longer you run it, the warmer it keeps getting, and eventually, yes, it will have thermal throttling, although it's not marked here. Have a quick look here now at just how well it can handle 4K. So this is a HEVC codec 4K clip. I think it's encoded to only about 16 or so uh, megabits per second there. 25 frames. So we we'll see how that handles that. I'm just going to bring up the task manager and we'll just have a look at the CPU load when it plays this. You see, memory usage at the moment is actually eating up about half of the memory there, but I do have a few tabs open there in Edge still. So I'll just run this now and we'll see how the performance goes. So I'm just going to mute it just in case there's any copyright problems. So that, it is actually playing that for us, and the load on the CPU, um, virtually, okay, so 5, 4%, virtually nothing, really. So what, your Windows 10 handles this H.265 codec just fine. There's any problems with that. So I'll try now streaming 4K. So I'm just going to use YouTube and load up a sample here. Find a 4K. So that's for nerds, sorry. So there we go. No drop frames, but this actually isn't running yet, is it? No, there we go. 2160p. Let's have a look at the buffer health. Just keeping up. Five seconds, seven seconds ahead. Connection speed, no drop frames though, so I'll play this in full screen. So it's handling 4K. Wow, now this is Edge, of course. If I do the same test over in Chrome, Chrome's going to struggle a lot more. It's causing a little bit of CPU low, but not a lot really. So try the same clip now in Chrome. So this is definitely looking a lot more choppy. It's definitely struggling. Drop frames, 15 drop frames, 43. And it's having a lot of trouble buffering this too. It's only giving me, okay, now I've got about a six second buffer. So 4K is streaming. You don't want to be doing it in Chrome. You definitely want to stick to Edge. That is just horrible. It's, it's too slow, too choppy. 
but it, it'll handle 1080p just fine. So if I remove the 4K quality, drop that to 1080, and now it should be smooth, yes. So that isn't a problem. So now on to gaming. I'm just going to test out a few titles here very briefly, very quickly, just to see how well in general it's going to perform. So this is Sniper Fury. It's a Windows Store game. And just the first tutorial mission, you can tell whether it's going to play good or not. And you can see here that that frame rate, I would say, is hovering around 20 frames per second. It's not really ideal. I mean, it's okay. It'll probably be playable. I can certainly aim at this guy here and take a headshot quite easily. Okay, this is a game, but it's a game benchmark. This is Resident Evil 5. Now, I'm going to run it in 720p. The default settings that it came up with, just to get an idea of how it performs. So it's going to be the fixed benchmark. Alright, so that benchmark has finished with only an average of 12.4 uh, frames per second, so that's n definitely not playable at 720p. Now my second to last game is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I'm going to run it on the lowest settings here, I'll just quickly show you. So everything's on very low there. And I'm going to try 720p. Now 720p probably will be too demanding for an Atom CPU. If not, I will lower the resolution to 800 times 600. So I'm going to try a game here with the Dust 2 map, and hopefully with a few players on there. Alright, so it's running around 20 frames per second. And I just got really lucky there. I wasn't even ready for that, but I'm horrible at playing this game. So CPU running at 72 degrees, getting a little bit hot there. And yeah, that frame rate is just way too low. It's very, very hard to be able to play in a this kind of frame rate. So I'm going to lower the resolution now down to 800 times 600, see if that improves things. Right, that has increased the frame rate a little, but it is definitely still struggling, around 24 frames per second. Uh, it's a reasonably busy server, there's a few players on there. But still, this is definitely not ideal. And he got me. Ah, it's just so choppy and laggy. Alright, I'll move on now and test out the last game, which is League of Legends. I have one bot on my side and two on the opposition. It's running in 1080p. I'll show you the video settings I do have, so very low option. And you can even lower some things down here as well, so I can turn off... Actually, no, everything's on the last. Last possible there. And running approximately 60 frames per second. And of course, the game is only starting, so we'll see how it runs when there is more on screen. So there are my minions on the way. Now, scrolling around the map seems quite fast. It's definitely looking like at 1080p it's going to be playable. Okay, so it has dipped down now to 30 frames per second, but I still think this should definitely be playable. Protect our land. At least giving you over 30 frames per second, so playable frame rates. So we can see here that uh, it has got up to 81 degrees, but there is no thermal throttling, which is a little odd because the first time I ran this for about 3 hours, I did finally actually get thermal throttling. 
but what it was doing was also benchmarking a lot so maybe that had something to do with it but so far with just the games I've tested uh, you can see the average temperatures are still quite high now touching it it's definitely quite warm I would say approximately about uh, 40 degrees so warm to the touch but nothing alarming nothing that's worrying there but still 81 degrees getting a little warm there but not too bad but gaming wise you can see there that the yeah, Counter-Strike wasn't really at all playable and the Resident Evil 5 benchmark a very slow low score there but League of Legends that one is at least is playable so just to recap here using the BT7 straight away you'll notice the fan noise and it does help it does help keep those temperatures lower for only a certain amount of time once you start to really push the system or gaming, the heat inside it is going to build up. And I think the flaw with it is it doesn't have enough vents on the side, or at least on the top, to be able to vent that hot air out of the housing. I think it's getting trapped in there and it's just circulating around. So eventually, as seen in this video, that it does lead to thermal throttling. Although it does bear a little bit better than the likes of the Voyo V3 that I reviewed that has the same chipset. It didn't take long at all for that one to get thermal throttling. And if you're using the B-Link here and you're not going to be gaming on it, you'll reach 81 or 82 degrees after a few hours of use. And it won't actually thermal throttling. It's just gaming, the same thing. So it's a, the trouble with this chipset is it definitely just runs a little too hot there that not even really copper heatsink and a little fan can help it. But besides that, we do have really good wireless AC on there. And because of this huge antenna they've put on there, the range of it is really good. I can use this downstairs furthest away from my router and I'm getting speeds just as if I was on the same floor as the router so that is definitely an added bonus there and you can get configurable storage options right up to 320 gigabytes. Thanks for watching this review. Hopefully I will see you back in the channel soon with more up and coming reviews on tech.